Welcome to encryption in SQL Server 22 from Zero to Neuro. Uh, my name is David Itzak, uh, DBA. Uh, about myself, I have, uh, I'm an uh, information system engineer, two second degrees, MBA, uh, uh, two second degrees, and specialist in SQL Server, Oracle, Cybest, Progress, also Power BI, you know, SQL Database, Lamont, Go, and Redis. More than 25 now years of experience also a specialist in Power BI. So on my previous lecture all over the world, it's TSQ Windows Function, Adaptive Query Plans, Query Store, NoSQL Databases, uh, SQL Server uh, 1920 on Container Kubernetes, Selfie, LLP, R, and Python, uh, all over the world. But uh, <laughs> you can see here, but the latest uh, lecture are in future data driven about uh, OpenAI, ChatGPT, GPT-4, Power BI, and Desktop. Uh, <clears throat> also in Data TLV, the same lecture. Uh, in uh, SQL Server 22 Linux container, I will lecture about uh, SQL Server containers, Linux container and Kubernetes. Uh, I'm also a research associate in one of the biggest uh, institutes in Israel. Uh, also especially in an AI research. So, Databases, Power BI, AI. <clears throat> so let's focus. I'm not a clever man, but I like to read books. This book was uh, not indexed by ChatGPT because it indexed to 22, but this is the books I read and then transform them to the presentation and to practical knowledge. These books are all uh, uh, smart people, especially from A Press, you can see it here. So SQL Server 22, etc., etc. These are recommended books. <coughs> Sorry, uh, my samples database is worldwide importer. A worldwide importer, DW, you can download it. These sample databases. Before you use uh, use um, SQL Server encryption, you should install the latest update or the latest most recent CU for Microsoft SQL Server from this link. You can see it here. Why? because encryption works better if you have the recent CU uh, installed. You should install latest uh, version of SQL Server Management Studio and Azure Data Studio, okay? So you can download from here. If you install Azure Data Studio the latest release, it will install also Azure Data Studio. Uh, <clears throat> so what is better for the DBA, whether to use Azure Data Studio or SSMS, the answer is, SSMS for developers of Azure Data Studio. So uh, why? Because SSMS support DB administration, security, query stock pack, back pack. But Azure on the other and Azure Data Studio is cross-platform, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So as I told here, you should install the latest CU for SQL Server 22. Why? Because if you don't install the latest CU, the encryption will work, will not work all the time. Well, it will be work slowly. So I solve 90% of my problem when I install the latest CU of SQL Server 22. So this is Microsoft Update Catalog from which you can install the latest updates. You can see it here. So what is the agenda? Okay, it's a lot of material, but this is the real material. This is the way you should act in encryptions. Look, I have 25 years of experience with Oracle, SQL Server, Starbase, MongoDB, Redis, with also security. I know the material, I read the books. Some of the articles in the internet are mislead you. And this is the way how to work with SQL Server encryptions. So let's talk about address encryption, transfer that encryption in SQL Server, key certificate, SQL Server hierarchy, how to create clean certificate, DB with TDE, benchmarking, managing TDE, Migrating and recovery TD, TD protected database, how to recover TD database, how to rotate certificate, what is the impact of TD of performance, backup performance and compression with TDE, TD and I availability, backup encryptions, and this is the demo. I will supply you, no problem. The demo all the time is updated. This is the screen of the demo. Uh, in my demo, I have two instances, SQL Server 22, TST and SQL Server 22 TST internal. If the time permits, I will talk about always encrypted and demonstrate and demonstrate it. So let's run. Okay, where the data should be protected? 
on this data files and backup file in memory on DB server in transit across the network in your applications, configuration file, et cetera, et cetera, and file which are stored outside the DB, file shell, for example. If you want to restore database to remote server, but it is enabled, and you didn't act like it in, in this lecture, you will get this error message. You can see it here. It means that you cannot install MDF file of SQL Server or backup file of SQL Server and transfer it to the remote server. Why? Because it's encrypted. So why encrypted? Because there are regulations. In Europe, there is GDPR. In UK, you get GDPR. In Canada, PIP, EDA, Personal Information Protection Electronic. In South Africa, POP, POP IA. In US, there is not some regulation, but the leading in regulation is California with CCPA, California Consumer Privacy Act. There is IPAA regulation, this is US federal laws for financial data. So, you know, there is Hasbro Oxy, which is very famous, and FIACTA, which is Fair and Accurate Credit Transaction Credit. FIAS MSA, which is Federal Information Security Management Act, and FSA. All these regulations which you implement. In order to implement them, you should implement DDE and encryption on SQL Server, Oracle, etc., etc. So, what is the purpose of encryption and available tools in SQL Server? The first feature is transparent data encryption. Transparent data encryption it protects data saved on disk, include data file, transaction, log file, backup file, and database snapshot. Backup encryptions, the backup file, always encryptions, always encrypted. The M office is data storing columns with all encrypted. The data is protected on disk, in memory, and in transit across the network. What is transparent layer security TLS? This is network traffic. TLS protect data in transit across the network as well. Come and execute against the database server. It's encrypted. Hashing and sorting. I will not cover it, but it this is a strict encryption, but it's used to protect password by hashing and solving them. Encryption function, data storing column, encryption function. This was introduced in SQL 25 before all was increasing, so they are not relevant. Extendable crew management EKM provide extra protection and ease of management for encryption keys by enabling them to store with the external provider outside of SQL Server. So encryption SQL Server in cloud. There is SQL Server in Azure running a virtual machine. I will show you it here. Azure SQL database. Azure SQL Management Instance, a SQL Server in AWS running on a virtual machine, EC2, SQL Server on WRDS, all these need encryption. You can use encryption of Microsoft, but you can use your own encryption with bringing your own key. So what is DDE? TDE is transparent encryptions. The process of encrypting, encrypting data that is fully performed in the background. This is a background process. You don't have to change the queries where you are using TD, whether TD is enabled or not. TD is not impact on the application functionality or the code. It's, it, it doesn't affect the code. You don't have to change the code. TD encrypts all the data in the, in the, um, in the DB. You don't, you don't choose which data item to encrypt. You can see it here. So data on disk is encrypted, data file, data snapshot, transaction log file, database backups. But TD works at the I/O level, encrypting data automatically as it's written to the disk, and encrypting as it's reading from the disk. So it encrypts the data when it's reading to the disk, and encrypts it when it's reading to the memory. So the data in memory is not encrypted when you are using the TD in buffer pool. You can see it here. Okay. So what is SQL Server encryption? This is the, the hierarchy. So you have the operating system, which is uh, the uh, DP API, Windows OS Data Protection API. You have the instance level of SQL Server Service Master Key and Database Master Key, which is a copy of the Master Key. Database level, you have Database Master Key, which is a copy of the Database Master Key. Certificate, Symmetry Key, Asymmetric Key, and you have external model, which have Certificate, Symmetric Key, and Asymmetric Key. I will not talk about this, I will talk about the best practice here. Okay, so you have Windows OS Data Protection API, SQL Server Instance Service Master Key, Instance Level, SMK, Database Master Key, DMK, Master Database Certificate and Symmetric Key, and User Database Encryption Key, Data Encryption Key. So you ask, 
why all this hierarchy? Why all this mess? Why I don't have less hierarchy? I will show you why. So what is symmetric key? Symmetric key is the weakest. It uses the same algorithm to encrypt and encrypt the data, but is the least performance hover end. You can encrypt the symmetric key with a password or with another key or certificate. Asymmetrically, we use two pair of keys or algorithm, one for encryption and the other for decryptions. So the key to encrypt the data is the private key. The key to decrypt is the public key. So this is a symmetric key. Certificate, issued by a trusted source, certificate of source, TCA. It uses an asymmetric key and provides digitally signed statement receipt next, which binds the public key to the principal device which holds the corresponding private key. We'll see the example, it will be clearer. Windows Data Protection, the API, this is interface which resides on Windows OS. It allows key to be encrypted by using either domain secret information. This is enable us to encrypt the service master key of SQL Server, top level of SQL Server encryption hierarchy. In the demo, it will be clear. So how do you manage database encryption key? Of course, from the GUI, you can go here on the database task and select the menu, uh, manage database encryptions. You can see it here, and we will have this. Uh, you can you can uh, manage database encryption, but I will show you the code. So, if database is not encryptions, you can see an example here. Okay, you can view the context of unencrypted DB in the Notepad X editor. For example, if you create database TD, I will not run the example now because you, are, you don't have too much time. Use TDB, create a DBOT one. ID identity one one text call varchar and then insert into TBOT had the value. This is not a TDM demo without encryptions. Then I will attach this DB. If I take an X editor here and open that database and search for this is the TD demo without encryption, I will find that you can read the data. The conclusion that that if the data is not encrypted, I can read the data. So <clears throat> this is, but unlike encrypted data, if you want to see the encrypted data of TD, that is encrypted TD, the next editor, you will see nothing. Even the space in your database is encrypted. Again, this is an example of where the data is not encrypted. <clears throat> so TD use multiple keys and certificate in process of protecting DB. So SQL Server often at least Again, this is the rules. You should act like that because this is the good rules checked by the books and the Microsoft documentation. You should have at least three components. The encryption key itself, a number in binary format, long and random enough to make it difficult to guess, even with brute force attempt. You should encrypt and encrypt your database. So this is, this is the encryption key itself. Another object used to protect the key is another key, the certificate or password used to encrypt the encryption key. So you see it here, certificate, master or uh, awesome, uh, master database certificate or asymmetric key. And the encrypted value of the encryption key form, formed from the original value of the key encrypted by the protecting objects. So key and certificate. So the area of encryption objects support TDE. This is the standard approach. There are another approach, but this is standard what you can see. It. So we have an encrypted version and we know what object was used to encrypt it. Second object is another key that is used to encrypt by a third object, as you can see here. Down in the hierarchy here, you can see the actual thing that is used to encrypt or decrypt the data itself, not encrypted value. And not the hierarchy of the object that protect the key. So to read the data, you need only the, to the down level here. You can see it here. To, to encrypt the data. So that database encryption key at the bottom of the key is the AK, database encryption key. It used to encrypt and encrypt data in DB. This is a symmetric key. Symmetric encryption is quicker and less overhead than asymmetric key. Database encryption key is store encrypted and there is no way to access the unencrypted version of the database encryption key in the database. Encrypt data case is also stored in DB backups, so it is here. Certificate and associated symmetric key pair, you can see it here, the hierarchy above. This contains a public key which can be used to encrypt data 
And as a reference to the private key, which must be used to decrypt the data. Okay, we'll see it in demo. Two key together, public and private key. So the public key, the public key can be held in plain sight and can be only used to encrypt the data. So this is the next thing. Another option for protecting database encryption key is asymmetric key stored externally to your SQL server in EKM. Database master key is here, stored in master data B and used to encrypt the private key. Only one game key for your SQL, uh, for your SQL server, only one database master key. Database master key is turned encrypted. Service master key at instance level is created when you first install a SQL server instance, it's unique to the instance, and the aim of it is to protect the service master key. Service master key is protecting by the system protection, the API here on the Windows operating system. So certificate and associated symmetric key pair. If you want to restore TD, protect your database from another server, we'll see it. Encrypt the database description key is also stored in your backup file. Only one database master key per instance. Okay. If the instance we are restoring already has a database master key and database necessary is already used to protect other object, we cannot replace this. That's why the critical that there must be an object between the database master key and the database encryption key. Because if you want to install it to another server, we cannot override the master database, which is another server. Therefore, we have here certificate. We'll see it. So, this is encryption hierarchy. If you're using AKA model, you can see it here. <clears throat> you should do several steps. And one of the steps is to enable AKA by enable AKA MSP configure for just once, reconfigure SP configure AKA provider enable, and then register the DLA of the provider of the AKM. So this is the steps. You can see it here. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go to the demo. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is the demo. The demo con uh, the demo uh, <coughs> the demo co uh, uh, contains several files. <laughs> the first file is you can see it here. Uh, SQL Server 22 encryption demo dot SQL. Okay, first let's enable query SQL CMD connect to our SQL Server instance, the first thing we have to do is to drop our uh, TD database in, in the demo. Because I want to clean the demo and set up clean, I should drop the master key. Okay. Execute. <clears throat> in this case, there is no master key, I tell you, uh, because there is no existence of the permissions. Let's check it. So you can see there is no uh, there is no uh, encryption there is no let, let's so let's let's see that everything is set up. Before I start the demo, I have to clean GDT, G backup, FM scale dump. This is our directory where we install the backups and 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 the and the <coughs> and the keys. So TG, uh, G backup. You can see it here and F. MSQL dump. This is clean. Okay. So here. Okay. I clean. No master key. See we clean. Okay. Uh, if I run this query, you can see nothing. Uh, <coughs> okay. Just clean before setup. Okay. Okay. TDE. And for the previous demo, drop any certificate. So let's start. Okay, now it's all clean, you can start. So first we create TDDB, create DBSDB, and now we create a table with a test column. You can see it here. Okay. 
Now use master splmtdb and we can see the file. You can see the file. You can see the file here. If I now go and do attach to the file, okay, and open X editor, X editor, I'll ask an example here. And go <coughs> to the file here. You can see it here. This is a copy of this file. And if I look, if I try to, to search her, F, Ctrl V, you can see that because the file is not encrypted, and I detach the file and open X editor, and you can see this is a TD without encryption key. Okay, so the file is not encrypted. Let's close it. Now I will attach the file again. You can see it here, attach the file again, and rob T1 table. Okay, so let's talk about the service master key. Service master key is the root level of success of encryption key. There is one per instance. It used to encrypt the database master key credentials and link server. This is the service master key. Password using the Windows Data Tent Protection API we saw it in the present. So it automatically generated when the first it you need to encrypt SQL server. Symmetric key using IS one five six algorithm for SS server uh, two one one two. So this is our service master key stored in master key, always precisely one per instance. So this is a service master key. <clears throat> so it's encrypted using the local machine, the API. The API uses the key that is derived from Windows credentials of SQL Server service account. So if I have operation user, which is under which SQL Server running, so the DPI will belong to this user. First, when SQL Server is, uh, is I have to backup and our master key. So I will show you how to backup your master key. So Vital, you must take a backup of, after SK service created, you must backup your service master key. How do I backup service master key? You can see it here. Backup service master key to file GTT service master key. Encryption by password. So let's run it. Maybe it's work, maybe not. <clears throat> by the way, Service master key is the name, you can see it here, of the file bank convention, not extension. So this is the name of the file. Oh my God, it's not working. Why it's not working? But if you can see here, the password is not, the password is simple. You will have this error message. So let's fix it and give it more complicated password. Backup service master key to file, GDT service master key, encryption by password. If I run this, it's work. So if I go to the SR directory and I should, the SQL server should have permission to write to this directory, you can see that we have service master key, which was created, okay? How do I restore service master key? It's very simple. Restore service master key from file decryption by password. So let's run this. Oh my God, it's do not work. Why do not work? Because the password here is incorrect. You can see it here. Let's run it again. Now it's working, but look what it's writing now. The old and new master key are identical. No data re-encryption is required. So when service master key is restored, SQL Server decrypts all the key and secrets that have been encrypted with the current service master key. Why? Because service master key is at the top. And then encrypt them with the service master key loaded from the backup file. But in this case, there was nothing that was encrypted by service master key. It's a fresh copy, so you don't have this. But if any of one description fail, the restore will fail. You can use the force option to ignore the errors, but this will option will cause the loss of data that cannot be encrypted. Okay. When you are moving SQL Server to another computer, migrate or service master key by using backup and restore to avoid issue with encryption hierarchy. It's very important. So if you go to the documentation of Microsoft here, backup service master key, you will read about it. How do I regenerate the service master key? At a service master key, regenerate. You can see it here. This is regenerate. 
<laughs> changing the SQL Server account. So regenerate the service master key. SQL Server, again, will decrypt all the key that have been encrypted with it, and then encrypt it from the new service master key. This is a very resource intensive information if this is a production server. It should be scheduled during a period of low demand unless the key has been compromised. If one of the encryption failed, all the statements failed. You can use, of course, the force option to regenerate the process, but you can lose data. If you want, you remember that the service master key is depend on the SQL Server account. If you want to change the SQL Server account, you should change it from here, from the configuration manager, from the configuration manager here only. You can change only from here. You can see it here, only from here, and you can change the SQL Server account from here. Why? Because uh, <coughs> uh, SQL Server store redundant copy of the service master key protected by the machine account that is necessary permission granted to SQL Server group. So if I have operation user and I have service master account, this copy is protected by the account on which SQL Server is run. If the computer is rebuilt to the same domain user that was previously used by the service account, we can recover the service master key, but this is option is only possible only if we are using <coughs> uh, with domain account. It is not possible with local account or local system account. So again, if the computer crash and I want to rebuild the SQL Server with the service master key on another machine, I should check that the service account run with the same service account on which the service master key run on the machine which fails, and thus we can build the service master key. Okay. <clears throat> now let's generate, let's create a database master key. First of all, let's check that we don't have any certificate before. We drop the master key. It will, it will shout, there is no master key. Now we'll create a master key. Use master, create master key encryption by password. Again, the password should be strong. Successfully. Now we'll back up the, ma the master key. So. Backup master key to file to GDT DMK, encryption by password. You can see it here. The password should be strong. Database master code used to encrypt the private key and the certificate that are stored within a DB. When can you create a database master key? I told you that you have two copies are created, both using AES25 and stored in master DB. If we go to this directory, you can see we have the service uh, database master key here. In, here. Here's the backup. <clears throat> this allows database master key to be open. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, one encrypted by password and my by service master key. Why we have this copy encrypted by service master key? Because every time SQL Server starts up, it can be opened automatically by the service uh, master key. Because why? Service master key protect database master key. If this copy does not exist, then you need to open it manually. You need to be explicitly open in order for you to key that has been encrypted. So database master key is encrypted by service master key. So why we have the encryption by password? Okay, the copy encrypted by password is necessary when you need to restore backup of the master, including the database master key, to a separate SQL server. No much use, or, there is no much use or, uh, for this, only you have to restore database master key. We recommend to back the database master key, also is not useful, only for objects that are not related to DDE, only to recover the TDE enabled TDE to separate SQL Server, we need the backup of the certificate and the private key. So this is the only reason we need to back up the database master key. Know that in SQL Server 22, you can backup and restore the database master key to Azure Bill of Storage, and this is a syntax. This is an example, and this is the reference here. So in this example, you can see that <clears throat> I, how do I restore master key? Restore master key from file, GDD, DMK. Remember, this is the backup. You can see it here. Decryption by password, the password in the backup file, and you can change a password. In this example, this is the same password, but you can change a password. So if I run this, and this is the older new master key identical. 
if you, you, you sometimes you can get the message the order master new identical no data encryption in quiet why because it's a fresh copy I did it in, in insert and encrypted data <coughs> As with service master key, if the restore is unable to decrypt and encrypt any of the keys below, the restore fail. You can use the force or a keyword, but you can lose data. Let's create, create a certificate. Let's create a certificate. So we create a service master key backup it, database master key backup it. And now uh, the third in here is the certificate. So use master go, create certificate ID cert with subject, and this is explanation about the certificate and expi expired date. You can see it here. So let's create a certificate. Once you create a certificate, uh, know that encryption by password is not required when private key is encrypted by the database master key. Why? Certificate is the uh, private key is encrypted by the database master key. So there is no need for password. If you try to run it again, it will tell you, uh-uh, there is already one like this. So we generate a self size certificate, which has public and private key pair, which can be used to for asymmetric encryption. The private key will be automatically be encrypted with the, by the database master key. You can create separate certificate for each DB. You can create certificate for each DB, or you create for like in this example, one certificate, for all the DB we want to encrypt, <clears throat> you can share the certificate between the multiple database. So if, of course, <clears throat> all the time, give your certificate meaningful and you can name for easy immigration to another server. So if you create certificate per DB, it's more hard to manage. If you create one certificate, it's more easy, but, you, uh, but, <clears throat> but it's less secure, okay? So let's check that ex uh, uh, your existing server configuration requiring the CIF certificate. Certificate, hold information about certificate. Select name, private key encryption, the desk, subject, start date, expire date, key length, form, CIF certificate, when name, TD is start. You can see it here. Let's run it here. So if you see here, you can, you can see you have the DD cert, encryption by master key, certificate ID for all DBs, start date. You can see the information here. So this is, how do you make the certificate? You should back the certificate when you create the certificate, and then you take this copy and put it in safe place. Okay, so let's back it. Uh, <clears throat> so we create two backup files, one for, uh, for the certificate and one for the private key. You can see it here. This is the whole method. This file and password to protect the private key need to be stored securely. So if you run this, ta -na 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 -na. And we go to GTD, you can see that we have the certificate and the private key. Then you should take it and put it securely. Okay. But if the file already exists in this directory, you will get error because there is already a cell and PVK file of the private key. So note. Okay. In SQL 72, certificate calls can be created and backup using. PFX format. Remember, this is a lecture on SQL Server 22. This allowed to serve, uh, uh, <clears throat> so we can uh, we can back up the private key and certificate both in PFX format, which is more secure. All stored in same file using in banana format and can be used to avoid using the weaker RC4 algorithm to learn conversion to public key pair. So if you run this, make a certificate in this uh, to file GTD. TD set PVX with format PVX, private key, extreme by password, algorithm AES. You can see it here, sorry. Then over here. Click in here. Oi. Just a minute. Let's see what happened here. Something wrong here. Minute. 
Vendes. So I find later what's the problem here. French, but this works. Okay. What's the syntax here? But I find it later, but I do not know what's the problem here. Okay. Okay. Now let's create the database encryption key, DSK. So how do you get the database encryption key? Database encryption key is used to encrypt it, keep the data store in your OTD, protect DB. Okay, so here there's some problem. I find it next what's the problem in syntax, but uh, <clears throat> let's create the database encryption key. Database encryption is using encrypt and encrypt the data store in your TD, protect the DB. Database encryption is required before DB can be encrypted by using the DB. So database encryption key is stored in the DB itself in the root record, but it's stored encrypted by the private key we created. Database encryption key is a thing you use for asymmetric encryption. Therefore, it's very fast because same key is used to both encrypt and encrypt the data. Symmetric encryption is much faster than asymmetric and transparent encryption activities to occur with a minimum overhead of latency. So symmetric key is very, very fast, and therefore database encryption key uses uh, uh, symmetric encryption. So you can see it here. Create database, encryption, uh, create database encryption key with algorithm AS256, encryption by server certificate TD cert we have created. So this is the certificate we have created. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see that we specify here the algorithm, which is the AS256. Oh. Remember that uh, uh, um, we, uh, the algorithm is advanced encryption start 256 bit, which is recommended. You should specify the certificate used to be which or identify the public and the private key to pair. Unlike other key, you don't need to backup the database encryption key because it automatically includes in any backup of your DB. Choosing an algorithm is a trade-off. So between performance and security, longer the key consume more CPU and overhead. <clears throat> When DB is transferred to encrypted, the whole DB is encrypted at the file level without any special code or modification in this case. The certificate and semantic key that is used to encrypt the DB encryption must be located in the master system database, like in this case. Certificate or semantic key used for TD are limited to private key size of 2052 uh, bit. Okay. Uh, DB encryption segments are allowed only on user database. DT encryption cannot be exported from the database. So this is the database encryption key. It's available only to the system, to user who have debugging permission on the server, and the user who have access to the certificate that encrypted crypt the database encryption key. DB, DB encryption key does not have been generated when database owner is changed. So it's very, very important. Database encryption key is inside the database. You cannot see it, you cannot export it. This is a moral lesson. So if we go hit, now let's, enc let's encrypt the DB. So after we create uh, the database master, we encrypt the database. How do we encrypt the database? At the database TDDB, set encryption node. This is very simple action, you can see it here. So I've just created a new empty database. There is no data encrypt the database, so therefore the encryption is very fast. Data will be automatically encrypted and read for disk. Any backup taking full logo the flash will automatically be encrypted after I issue this statement. Okay. The certificate or asymmetrically used to encrypt the DB encryption must be located in the master system database. When the data is only exchanged, the database encryption key does not have to be regenerated. After the database encryption key has been modified twice, a log backup must be performed. Note. So let's see that our database encryption select name from this database where is encrypted, equal one, you can see it here. And you can see that TD is encrypted and also 10DB is automatically become encrypted. Why? Both our TDDB and 10DB get encrypted. 10DB is encrypted when any other DB use TDE, automatically. Let's see more details. Select the name encryption star, then type algorithm length, person complete from, uh, from this database encryption key. In a joint C database, on key database ID equal database ID. If you run this query, 
you can see here that this is the name, encryption state, which is three, encryption type, so 10db is asymmetrically, tdb is certificate, certificate is created, key algorithm, key length, and percent complete. So you can see it here. So what is encryption state column? Encryption state column is very important because we have six uh, values. Unencrypted, unencrypted in process, encrypted, key chain in progress, in decrypted in progress, protection chain in progress. So, percent complete here. This has a meaning when encryption state changes according to when DB is a lot of data inside and we have encrypted database. Otherwise, it will be like here, zero because we don't have data. When DB is content data, encryption is immediate. <clears throat> when DB contains no data, encryption is immediate. If encryption state is two, so it means that encryption process, then we would see a value here while DB is in process of being encrypted. From SKS 19 there are two extra columns. Column name is encryption state distribute, okay? And that, uh, which is indicate whether database encrypted or not encrypted, and encryption scan state, which indicate the current state of encryption state. So let's do a little bit of benchmark of TDN performance encryptions. We will load data in my TDDB and we'll see how the encryption process perform. We'll use it with TD turned off and on once the data is loaded. So first let turn back to database to alter database TD set encryption off. You can see it here. Now database is not encryption. It tell you comment successfully completed. Sometimes it will not successful because it tell you Database encryption failed because uh, G is uh, decryption or key changing progress. If it's not encrypted, you tell us. Call, uh, <clears throat> so this process can sometimes fail, but in this case, our database is empty. So let's populate our TDDB, create a database which is credit number, and you can see I will populate the table. You can see I will populate the table, insert a lot of tables. So let's run only this code, which will create a big table in run it. You can see it. Now we create the T credit num table. You can see it here. Let's refresh. You can see that a table which name T credit num has been created. You can see it here. Okay, and we want to encrypt the credit number. So how do we do the benchmark? So we have to run all the data by set encryption on, then, then check select state key encryption state from C's database encryption key, inner John key database on database ID or database ID named DDE. While set is not equal to between key encryption, still uh, query the database for the database status. So you can see the code here. Select get date percent complete encryption, encryption state from this database encryption key in a drone sys database on database ID, where database name is TDDB. Wait one, one uh, second, and then Query again the key encryption state if uh, key encryption states. So let's run this code. A minute, sorry. sorry. Ah, okay, sorry. So we saw it's already enabled. Just a minute. So uh, I ran something before, but if you want this, if you want this code, you will see that. Uh, you will see, if you want this code, you will see that when the database is running, the process encryption will get, this is the date, 
percent complete and encryption state, which is to which mean database in encryption state. When it's finished, it should get out of this loop. So maybe I can run it again. Just a minute because uh, uh, okay. So this is the uh, <clears throat> this is the loop. Okay. Let's view more detail about the configurations. If run this, okay, you can see that you have the name of the database, encryption state, encryption state description, encryption type, key algorithm, key length, and percent complete. How do we monitor problems? Encryption encode as a backup process, as you can see before, but it's not a problem unless your users is already under stress. If there is a lot of data, you should and you enable encryption, you should monitor CPU and IO and block causing by encryption because when encryption is happened, it catches the blocks encrypted. So how do you monitor blocking by encryption? You simply run this, select star from CSDN run logs, resource type, encryption scan. You can see it here. Current, uh, sorry. Currently this database is not under stress. Uh, also, you should monitor transaction using the DCC log info. Because while encryption scanner is running, transaction log cannot be truncated and VLF marked for use. In high availability scenario and high availability group and log shipping, check sync process remain healthy during encryption scan. Okay, it's very important. So, performance plan on during encryption scan. So, this is very important. You should run this. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, again, before the problem during the encryption scan, don't, if you have problem of encryption scan because that is encryption, do not turn encryption off. Why? Because if you uh, run alter database TD set encryption off, it will, it will begin decrypting and everything that was encrypting. Later, it will have to start again. You will get a message, and uh, you will get a message. Can all this have a database encryption while an encryption decryption or key length change is in progress? So what is the solution? This is the magic. In s 19 and later, you should use this. Alta database TD set encryption suspend. You can see it here. Sorry, this. This is the all right, all right, just a minute. So this is the magic. Uh, what's happening? I do not know. This is a command. Alter database TDB set encryption suspend. Okay. So like uh, like with the trace flag, do not turn off. Encryption backup process existing data is paused, and when you are this command, the encryption pause, uh, process will pause. Okay, new data still will read into this encrypted in, when you are doing suspend. Possible error: encryption scan cannot be suspended because no encryption scan is in progress. So we can do also a resume. Okay, we can see also run this other data CD. Set encryption resume if the process stops. Okay. In SSR19, since database encryption key view, you have encryption scan state description, the state of the scan, and in case of scan modify state. This is new two columns. State of the scan, running suspend, and when the scan was last modified. So if you run this. You can see, you can see here, encryption scale state descriptions and encryption scale modified state. This is new column in SK719. In SK717 on lower, to pause encryption, you can use DBC stress on 5004. To begin the scan again, you do you should run DBC stress off 5 
or file minus one, other database has the set encryption on. So again, if you have encryptions and you want to stop it, never stop it, pause it. In SK Server uh, 19 and forward, you should use this. Suspend and then resume. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the command. Um, taking backup while encryption is progress. You can continue to backup the database until the process is completed. Your backup will be not fully encrypted. So if there is encryption in the background and the database is not fully encrypted, the, all not all the backup will you will be encrypted. So you have to wait till the backup will be encrypted. How do you manage TDE? If you want to migrate and encrypt the database. If our SQL Server is not available, we need to recover encrypted data with TDE. So let's assume that this server is gone and we want to restore our database. How do you do it? First, you have uh, <clears throat> our assumption that you have uh, uh, you should have you should have a backup of the certificate and private key. <clears throat> if our SQL Server is not available, we need to recover encrypted data with TDE. We have to have a backup or the certificate and a private key and the PFS format from previous. So you can see it here. We can store it off. Uh, we can take <coughs> this database, this backup of the database. You can see it here. Store securely uh, the DB backup file. So we should store offline file, the backup file, the certificate, the private key, and a, uh, and a password which is used to encrypt the private key. So this is our backup, you can see it here. Now let's open, let's open the second, uh, let's let's connect to our uh, other server, which is SK server internal, this server. And summing out, we want to immigrate the, we want to immigrate the backup of the database to the other server. So this is. A minute. Let's connect to the other internal server. We'll open <clears throat> okay. So remember that on our first server we did a backup. So if you want uh, <clears throat> first we'll drop the TDDB here. Now we'll restore if we'll try to take the backup. You see this backup TD backup. We go here. We go here. Backup. Go here. And copy it to here to the backup here. You see it here TD backup. And if we try to restore it to the other server, you will see this hello mesh which says ah. Uh -uh. We cannot find the server certificate. Why? Because if you want to restore the server, the database from another server, we need to restore the certificate and then the database. How do you do it? How do you do it? We go to our server, drop database TDDB, draw the certificate, and drop master key and create master key. The master key can be with the same password or uh, with other passwords from the source server. So let's run it. Now 
Now on the target server, we should create a master key. You can see it here, the master key. The master key we can be with the same master key of the source server, or with, an, uh, with the same password, or with another password. You can see it here, we create a master key. Now we will connect to our server, and, and we should restore our, the, remember that we get we create a TDA certificate in the server, in the store server, we create a certificate here. We, can, we create a certificate. We should create a certificate which is restored from the original server. Okay, restore it. Then create the certificate. Then create the certificate. And then we can restore the database. Restore database TDB from disk, TDE. And, and that's the and that's the restore on the target server is working. Why? Because we take the certificate from the first server we have created in the PFX format, which something is wrong there. We create a certificate which is restored from the original server, and then create the certificate server with the read password here, and then restore the backup, and the backup will be automatically will taken from the second server. Why? Because again we restore the certificate. And this is the way you restore one certificate from another one database from one database instance to another instance. Okay, let's disconnect. So first. See. Let's connect to our uh, query SQLCMD and talk about another issue. Key rotation. Key rotation is very important because the process of replacing your encryption key is good practice and it's required by many security certificates. So you have to rotate your key. The reason why there is a separation between the actual key used to protect the data and the second key used to protect the encryption key. So we have to do a key rotation. So, in, T, in TDE, database encryption key is protecting the certificate. Remember, it's protecting the certificate and associate keeper. In TDE, rotation is rotate the certificate. Activity done within chaining the, the, the other line, the key does not need to be decrypted and re-encrypted. Again, if I go to the pick, to the demo, to here, if I go here, if I go here, you can see it here. We have, we are doing key rotation, but this does not affect the lower level here. Why? Because we have certificate. Okay, so the key rotation is being done on the higher level. So let's go here. So in TD database encryption is protected by certificate and associate keeper. So the rotation does not affect the database encryption key. So database encryption key is used by TD in health security. So let's rotate, uh, let's rotate it. How do we rotate? First, let's see our TD cert here. You can see it here. Select use, you must select name, subject, expired date, form certificate, we're named TD cert. This is a certificate we have created. Now we want to rotate it, why? Because we'll change it. So we create another certificate, create right? certificate TD cert new, with subject cert for TD for all DBs and DD, with longer expired date, you can see it here. Let's see that both exist. You can see that we have both certificate one and two. Okay. Now, how do I rotate between the certificate? So, use TDDB as a database encryption key, encryption by service master key, server certificate TD start new. So, I'm rotated from the old certificate to the new one. Key value itself doesn't change, just the object protecting it. You can still read and write data from DDB without changing the encryption of data. So this is the command, you can see it here. You can see that we have changed the certificate and now we have warning, please back up the certificate. So I go fast here and I immediately back up the certificate. There is some problems here, I do not know why, but it's hoax. I back up the certificate in. Okay. 
some character inter here, inter here, but uh, this is the backup of a certificate. Okay. How does TD impact performance? So, how uh, does TD impact performance? So, TD usually has performance overhead of two or five percent. Uh, encryption occurs that when data is written to the disk, and encryption is called data is read from the disk. Each of those activities use CPU. So a system with high heavy I.O., there is more CPU overhead. Conclusion. In, uh, <coughs> uh, David, 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 10 minutes to go. Ah, okay. Uh, so it will 10 minutes. Uh, so if your SQL server enough memory, read queries can access the buffer pool, and those queries performance should be not affected by TD. Conclusion. It lets time. Uh, Conclusion from this that elapsed time was about the same time with or without CPU when the data is in memory. The problem happened when we want to read data to disk or to write data to disk because it will work on the I/O level. Let's see the example here. So you can see it here. Use the DB, DB clean buffer, flash of data in buffer cap, set a statistic time on, select from this is our table. You can see it here. And if you look here about the execution time here, you can see it here. You can see it here. You can see the result here. <clears throat> that uh, the first read from disk is elapsed time is 152 one, one, millisecond because this is the reading from the disk and uh, in, uh, in, uh, re uh, encrypt, uh, decrypting the data to the memory. And after the data is disk, the read is very fast. You can see it here because it's it encrypted in the buffer and no need to encrypt or decrypt the data. So the problem only happens when you read right to the disk. So if you do a performance uh, uh, compression with TDE, you can see that TDE is all that I read from disk. It's about uh, right when you want to read a lot of it, this is a CPU time, 9500, and the elapsed time in we said in 4266, no TD with all data read from this, this is the result. Okay, data with all data read from memory, this is uh, 11100, but no TD with all data read from memory, it's exactly the same. So again, you can see that only when you want to read all the data the first time from the disk to the memory, this is the heavy, the heavy, the heavy problem, you can see it here. So again, TD only over the related disk. Backup performance. So backup performance. TD has a little impact on backup performance. When backup is reformed, SQL Server does not have to encrypt the data. The data already encrypted to disk. There may be some data in memory not encrypted and written to disk. Backup compression. Know that until 1.6 version, backup compression on TD does not support. One reason that most compression algorithms work with repetition. Encrypted data is random. Change from SQL Server 1.6. Max transfer size is the unit of transfer in bytes used between SQL Server and the backup media. Backup operation with CD work with max transfer greater than 64 kilobyte. Common use uh, uh, is 128 uh, kilobyte is used. So let's see example here. Backup database to this, M scale dump TD compressed backup with compressed in it, max transfer size. And this is, you can see, you can see, you can see it here. It's got it there, 64 gram. But you don't have to specify this parameter if you are using SQL Server 1.9 CU5 an hour. You can see it here. So there is no problem with compression of backup NTD from these versions. Let's open. That's one in demo. So let's see before uh, overall on performance. So again, this is this is our database encryption key. Let's create our database with a lot of data. Use a 
and create a big table. You can see it here. So we generate a very big, big table. You can see it here. And now create a Redis master key if not exist. Okay. And now let's <clears throat> create backup certificate here. You can see it here. This is backup certificate. Let's see backup certificate is subject, expired date. And now we'll back up the certificate as we told you. You have to back up the certificate. Okay. And now you want to back up the database. Working with the encrypted backup, you can encrypt any of the backup types, full differential or logs. So if you run this, you can see backup database to backup uh, encryption, two disk encrypt backup within it, and encryption, this is algorithm, and this is a certificate. You can see it here. So if you run this, this database is encrypted. Okay. You can use restore and only to see the content. And you can restore it without any problems. So this is example, how do you backup database? This is example of how do you backup the encryption? Again, the process is create your database. Create certificate for your backup. You can see it here. And then back up the certificate. Okay. After you back up the certificate, you should back up the database to this within it. You specify here the algorithm and the certificate you should use. And does the algorithm and does the backup is uh, encrypted. Okay. But I think uh, that's all. But if you have power, I continue to, in, uh, to enclave. But uh, I think my time is gone. Am I wrong? Okay. No, you still have three minutes, but it's okay so if you want to do it. You want, you want to hear about enclave? You have power or you are tired? It's, it's okay. It's okay. You can still have it. Uh, let's complete it, David. <laughs> it's an interesting okay, question. Let's run so. fast. 10 minutes about enclave. It's okay. Let's run. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No. okay. Let's talk about the clay very fast. Okay. It's... Okay. Okay. There is also a demo, but I will show you. Uh... Okay. Now we are talking about I want to encrypt the data over the network. How do you do it? Okay, you should you, you can use always encrypted. There is always encrypted in Clave, the more moderate version, but I will talk about always encrypted. So how does always encrypted works? Always encrypted. <clears throat> uh, so let's talk about it. On SQL Server side, yes, column encryption key. The column encryption key is used to encrypt and encrypt the data, stored encrypted in the database. Column encryption key is, encrypt the co uh, is encrypted by the column master key. Column master key is a certificate and a keeper that usually sit on the client machine on the APP server. On SQL Server, we have a column master object. This is a pointer to location of the actual uh, column master key. So you can have one uh, 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 CK column encryption key for all the encrypted column in your DB. Column master key can be shared by multiple column encryption key. You can have one or multiple column encryption key, column uh, master key, one or multiple. So how always encrypted work very fast. One, you, should, you can see that this is application server, this is database server. Remember that we want to encrypt the data which is moving on the wire, on the network. So how do you do it? First, the application issued a query, request data. So the application creates connection to the server. It must specify the connection we use, always encrypted. This is the only change you need to make to your application, if you're lucky. The application issued the query in a normal ma manner. Then it will request the encryption metadata. When issuing when issue a query and plain text value, the target gets the column must be passed as parameter. In encryption mode, all the parameters should be passed as parameters. They cannot be as literal value. It must be encrypted before being sent to DB. Client driver, you can see the client driver here. Request the relevant encryption metadata from SQL Server to understand what encryption extreme it must do. 
אוקיי, then SQL Server return the encryption metadata. It's past the query test and identified if there are any columns that targeting by parameter that are subject of column encryption user always encrypting. The information is sent back, you can see it's back, it's sent back to the client along with encrypted value of any column encryption key, C case, used for each case, and the location of the column master key. This encryption method is cached locally on the client machine node, that is, or the application server, to get the metadata that do not need to make with the same query. Request CMK, this is stage four. Stage four, request uh, CMK, you can see it here. Using the detail provided encryption metadata, the client driver makes call to the access to the certificate and key for the service master key because they want to decrypt the data in the column. Usually these are stored on the certificate, stored on the application server. You can see it here. So where there are multiple application server, then they need to be stored on each. You can also store your service master key on external store on Azure Key Vault. So again, I want to encrypt the data which run on the wire. So how do you encrypt the, how do I decrypt the data with service master key? You can see it here. And stage four or five, it's returned the service master key retrieved by the client driver. You can see it here. How do you include the parameter? Again, in Enclave, I cannot use literal. I should use parameter. So any parameter that target encrypt column need to be encrypted. The service master key was returned by SQL Server from a given column. Is decrypting using associate service master key. Okay. <clears throat> issue the query. And now we can issue the query in stage five. The query with its parameter in, uh, encrypted by the last step is sent to the SQL Server to be executed. You can see it here. Return an encrypted result. You can see it here. Where query has result, as with the query, the results are returned. Returned are returned. Results are, <coughs> are returned. Where this includes encrypted column, then it's encrypted, uh, then is the encrypted value they get passed back. Equation metadata is sent back to alongside the result. You can see it here. This is step nine. And step nine, so step nine is decrypt the data. Where the result contain encrypt column, these are decrypted by the client driver. Okay, step nine. And in step 10, the return as a result. Let's see the demo, it will be more clear. This, this is too much complicated explanation, but it's very simple. So, how do you set always encrypted? I'm not smart. I use this demo, but I change this demo it's based on uh, <clears throat> all other computer. And this demo is always encrypted for Microsoft, but I change it a little bit. I should restore what was important and set completely to 22. So first, we have to create worldwide importer. You see it, and create uh, and we create a table which is uh, and if we have column key and column master key, we have to drop them. So <clears throat> remove any existing column key or table. You can see it here. Demo server always get the key. You can see it here. Okay, we draw it. Okay. And now, <clears throat> so, so we should create a certificate and call a master key. So first, Column master key. We should first create a follow column master key. Few options for create a column master key. In demo, we use certificate stored on your local machine, which contain asymmetric key. You can also use asymmetric key stored in an external key, such as your key vault. Column master key, so SMS. Let's create a column master key, so SMS. It also create a column master key object in your DB. That's identified the location and identified of the actual key, which is not stored on your database. It's stored on your machine where you operate your SSMS. So you can see it here. If you go here, <clears throat> sorry. If you go to database here, what will import security, uh, 
always encrypted key, you can see it here. Oops. New column master key. New column master key. Now, you tell him that you want to use the uh, car. Now, if you go here, okay. If you want to tell him that you want to use Windows certificate store on current user. So, if you go here, is it here? Windows certificate current user, and you can give him the name. Again, note that I can create a new certificate or use the one that is reside on your machine. You can see it here, generate certificate, or I can use the one that is created here. And then click OK. That's all. David? So if you go, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, David, how much more time? Because I need to, uh, because the recording will automatically stop. So that's, ah, okay. that's it. <laughs> so uh, maybe we'll continue another time. So that's the finish. It doesn't finish very fast. We can create master keys very, very. Yeah, but, but you can you can you, you you can wrap up. I still have five minutes because at 7:55 hard stop is there. So 5:55. Okay. So, so just 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 you have still four minutes to complete your thing if you have. Okay. So it'll run very fast. We then create the master key. In the boxes you can see all the certificate that selected the key store available on your machine. On the machine, your machine it can be where SSMS is running, not where SSK server. If you operate SSMS on your SQL server, you will see the certificate on your SQL server. So it's created on your local machine. The account that we need permission for the certificate is usually should be the operation user under which SQL server is running. Okay? So note. If SQL Server run as, as in the domain account, it should have permission for this certificate. Okay. After we create it, we should run select star from this column master key. And if we run in, we can see our column master key we have created. Now we should create a certificate in local machine or current user. We have to decide whether to create a certificate in the local machine or current user. The recommendation, you should deploy to the current user store for the current application runs. Again, if, uh, if, the, application, uh, if the application is run under specific operation domain account, then the certificate, uh, then <clears throat> you sh this user should have uh, access to the certificate. Okay? This in order to minimize the set of account that can access certificates. So, the operation user that run the application should have access to a certificate because the certificate will be on this application server. Now we create a column master key. So <clears throat> uh, if we create a column master, you can uh, create a column master. This is create column master key, column master key with key store provide name, key store provide name and key pass. Telling us that is where is the certificate we have created. This is a certificate provider and this is the path to the certificate. Column master key is an object stored in your database. It's just a pointer to the actual service master key. This is only a pointer. No, it's not stored in your SQL server. So this is your column master key. So how do I know? Because if you go to your column master key and generate SQL, you will have this. You have this SQL certificate and the key pass. Select sys for a uh, star from sys column master key, you will have here this. <clears throat> Let's write a column encryption key. So again, go here, new column encryption key. And after you create it, you can select star from column encryption key. So name www column encryption key and column master key that we have created before. So this is an object of slower. Select star from this column encryption key will have the column encryption key here. You can see it here. Okay. <clears throat> now, if I will generate SQL for the column master key, it tells us where what is column master key is based on and what algorithm is. So you can see that it's based on algorithm RSA OEF, and this is encrypted value. The unencrypted value of the column encryption is never exists so the SQL server. So both column master key and column encryption key are required to interact with encrypted data. Again, this is very important. 
always encrypted, soft secure. Even you have admin right to SQL Server instance, you don't have access to the encrypted value of SQL Server encryption key. And you can read data unless you have access to the column master key two. And column master two resides on the application server. You can deploy pre-created column encryption key uses the preceding code, but you cannot regenerate fresh column encryption key. Only to create it once. So it's very, very important. And how do I create encrypted column? Create table, blah, 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 blah. Encrypt it with column encryption key. This is WI column encryption key. Encryption time, deterministic algorithm, and this is the algorithm. Encrypt it with column encryption key. This is the column encryption key. Encryption time, randomized. So we have, we can specify which algorithm type could use deterministic and randomized, and which algorithm we will use. You can see it here. This is how we specify the table. So encryption color limitation, very fast. Encryption, always encrypted, can work with most of data type. You can encrypt both that, a number and string, but you are limited to the extra function that you can have. You cannot able to create color with the properties identity. A string may color must use bin to collision, which is case sensitive. David, David is not, yeah. David. The recording will gonna stop, so <laughs> I think we let's wrap it up. Ah, uh, okay. So we'll stop. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for that. So. Okay. <laughs>